Do, 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 do. These are the voyages of the statistics introductory class. It's continuing five month mission to seek out and understand new science. Today, we are going to talk about the normal distribution. Here is what it looks like. You can see it is sometimes called the bell curve. Here is where the mean is, mu, and here is the standard deviation which looks more like a circle or a triangle than sigma, but you know what, that's the best I could draw. So this is the typical way we draw the normal distribution, and here's the notation. We say it's normal, centered at mu, and here, instead of standard deviation, we put sigma squared. And that's almost every introductory textbook does it that way. I have seen two or three textbooks that put sigma here instead of sigma squared, but that's very unusual. So check your book. Make sure that your notation is clear with what we're doing in this class. In this class, that number is always the mean. This number is always variance. Let's do an example. Let's talk about the amount of sleep that people get. Is sleep really normally distributed? Let's pretend it is. All right. What do you think is the average amount of sleep that a college student gets? Seven hours? Six. Six? Cameraman says six. We'll go with six. So this is our average. Some people get less and some people get more. What do we think for a standard deviation? Six hours plus or minus, let's go with two. Two hours. So is it possible for someone to get eight hours of sleep? Yeah. They would be one standard deviation up here. A standard deviation is two, so if I go from six up one standard deviation, here's where eight lands. Are there people who get 10 hours of sleep? Well, yeah, but they're very rare. Are there people who get 12 hours of sleep? Yeah, but it's extremely rare. So rare that if I were to draw my tails out, it would look like there's almost no probability here. Are there people who only get four hours of sleep? Well, sure, that's back one standard deviation. Two hours of sleep, yeah, but it's very rare. So this helps us understand what it means for something to be likely or not so likely based on the normal distribution. What we would say is sleep, and we're going to do a little squiggly sign for is distributed. I mean, sleep is distributed, normal, centered at 6, and now I need to put the variance. The standard deviation is 2, so I can either put 4, or I can just go like this, 2 squared. And you'll see that notation a lot, because it emphasizes that 2 is the standard deviation, and that's the number that we're interested in. So now we're ready to ask questions about how much sleep people get. What is the probability that a random student would get less than 4 hours of sleep? Well, I can answer this with a picture to get the exact number. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Where am I if I say 4? From 6, where do I draw the line? I draw it back one standard deviation. That's where 4 lands. How did I know that's where 4 lands? We intuitively can see it on the picture. Let's talk mathematically how I did that. So here's what we did. We said how far away was 4 from 6 and how many standard deviations would that be? So we said 4 is this far away from 6 and here's how much a standard deviation is. And that gave us negative 1. Negative 1 what? Negative 1 standard deviation. We were back from the mean 1 standard deviation. That's how we got to 4. Let's emphasize this because it's a really important equation. What we did is we took what we were interested in, what we got, what we observed, or what we're trying to find the probability of. We'll call that our x. And we subtracted what we expected. We expected 6. 6 was our mean. So we subtracted our mean and divided that by how much error there is. That's our sigma. This equation is so commonly used, it has a name. It's called the z-score. And you are going to do the z-score lots and lots and lots in this class. You might as well get comfortable with it. This equation should make sense as to what we're doing so that you wouldn't even need the equation. You just have it memorized. All right? Let me try to put it in words, not in math form. What you got minus what you expected to get divided by 
the error. Okay? In other words, what we're saying is, how far away is it relative to how much error there is? How far away relatively? This is at the heart of everything statistics does. How far away are you, really? How far is what you got from what you expected to be relative to the error? It's x minus mu over sigma. You're going to say that over and over until you wake up in the middle of the night and just shout out x minus mu over sigma, and your roommate looks at you like, what's wrong? Are you insane? You'll say, don't worry, it's statistics. This is the equation in class. Everything we're going to do is going to be based on this idea, x minus mu over sigma. What does it mean? Here's the x we were interested in. How far away is it from our mean relative to the standard deviation? It is one standard deviation down. Now, from here, we want to know the probability of being that much or less. Here's picture-wise what I'm talking about. What's the probability of being there at four or less? This is the area that we're interested in. Now, if you're a really good artist and you're good at guessing, you can probably eyeball about what that is. 15%, 20%, somewhere in that range. We'll find out exactly. Now, this does not have a nice geometric shape, so you're not going to be able to figure it out just by looking at the shape of it. What you've got to do is use some math, and people have already done that, and it's called a z-table. So now I'm going to show you what the z-table looks like and how to use this number, negative 1, to find this area. Okay, this is a z-table. You should have had one in your syllabus. You can print one out. They're online. It's easy to find. This is what the z-table looks like. Now, along this edge are those z-scores. This is a distance. Negative 3.7 right here, that means you are 3.7 standard deviations below the mean. So let's scroll down. Here we would see being half a standard deviation below the mean. Oh, don't grab it yet. Ugh. Down here at zero, you would be zero away from the mean. Okay? Now, these numbers in here are areas or probabilities. And it's the area from where you are to the left. So right here at zero, zero means you are right on top of the mean. You are no standard deviations away. How much area do you have to the left? Well, 50%. Obviously, half of it. Half of it is from the mean to the left. Let's look at the number we had. It was negative 1.0. If I scroll up so that we can see negative 1. Here is negative 1.00. This corresponds to negative 1.01, negative 1.02, negative 1.03, negative 1.04. So these numbers allow you to get that second decimal place of accuracy. The number we're using in our example was negative 1.00. So this right here is our probability, that 0.1589. So let's go back to our picture and see if that 0.1589 looks reasonable. Okay, so we looked up on the z-table. This number 4 corresponded to a z-score of negative 1. I'm not looking up 4 on my z-table. I'm looking up the negative 1. And I look in that left-hand side, and then I went to negative 1.00, and that gave me a probability of, of 0.1587, was it? 0.1587. Does this look like it's just over 15%? I think, yeah, that's pretty reasonable. I'm not the greatest artist, but even I can see that seems like a pretty reasonable answer. So that's what we have right here. The probability that a student gets less than four hours of sleep is 0.1587.